What is up everybody? Welcome back to the Maths Guide. Today we're looking at a pretty challenging lesson. We're looking at how to add and subtract decimal numbers. Let's jump into it. Okay, the first thing we need to remember is that column titles will help us to avoid some small mistakes. Now I always encourage using column titles, but it's never more important than when we're using decimals. Let's understand why. So let's look at this first question. I have 24.52 and I'm going to add it to 245.3. Now what some people might do is they might put 24.52 and they're going to add it to 245.3. Well, is that right? No, because look, we can see our decimals are not in line. Therefore, my ones, I have four ones here and five ones here, are also not in line. So I'm adding the wrong numbers together. So I can avoid this small mistake by putting my column titles. And in this case, I'm going to need ones, tens, hundreds, but I'm also going to need my decimal. And now on the other side of my decimal, I have tenths and one hundredths. Wow, now I'm ready to start. And now I can look at my first question of 24.52 and I can see that I have two tens, I have four ones, I have my decimal and I can check that's in line, which it is, which is good. Then I have five tenths and two one hundredths, 24.52 in the correct place. And now I can add it to my next number. So I'm adding to 245, so I'd have 200 and four tens and five ones. Then put my decimal back in the correct place and I can see I have three tenths. Now I can add my equals line and if you know me at all, you'll know I like to leave a gap above my equals line so that if I have anything to carry over, I have a whole gap for it and I'm not just trying to squeeze it in anywhere. So I'm ready to begin. Well, not quite because I can see that I have some gaps in my question. I have a gap just here and I have a gap up here. Now, in addition, it's not a big problem because addition is what's called commutative, which means that if I add two to nothing, I'm still gonna get two. But in subtraction, this becomes a big problem, which we'll see in a minute. So to get into a good habit, I'm gonna put some placeholders in these gaps now to avoid making small mistakes later. So I'm gonna add a zero into this gap and a zero up into this gap. Now these zeros have not changed the value of my numbers at all, but they have made it easier to see what I'm doing. Now I'm ready to begin. And I start in my smallest value, which before was always our ones. But now I have something smaller than ones. I actually have tenths and hundredths. So in this case, my hundredths is my smallest value. So I'm gonna start here. Two add zero is two. Then in my tenths column, I have five and three. Five and three is eight. Put back my decimal. And again, let's check it's in the right line. It is. So I know I've done that right. Now in my ones, I have four and five, which is nine. In my tens, two and four, which is six. And in my hundreds, two on its own is two. So my answer to 24.52 plus 245.3 is 269.82. Pretty simple, right? It's exactly like column addition, but we now just have a few digits after my decimal. Couple of things just to check. Have I put my decimal point in the right place? Yes. Have I filled in any gaps with a placeholder? Yes. These two tips will help me avoid any small mistakes. Let's see why this is really important when we look at subtraction. So my subtraction question says 929.10 subtract 25.012. Now, let's start by putting my column titles again. So I have ones, tens, hundreds, but I also now have my decimal, I have tenths, and I have one hundredths. But I also now, if we see here with this two, have one thousandths. Wow. Now I can put my numbers in place by seeing this first number has 929. Put my decimal in, in place. 
and then I have one tenth and zero hundredths and I'm subtracting 25 which would be two tens five ones put my decimal back and again we can see my decimals are all in line so I've not made a mistake there zero tenths one hundredth and two thousandths now put my equals line and ready to begin well am I ready to begin because look I have these gaps again and let's now see why these are really important if I ignored these gaps and just said okay well let's do my thousandths column first of all well I have nothing and a two well I might be inclined I might want to just put a two here well that's not right because if I have zero or nothing I can't take away two so my answer is not going to be two so I need to put a placeholder I need to represent this zero up here with my placeholder and again here in the hundreds column let's see the difference now when I'm looking I can start with my thousands and I can see I have zero subtract two well I can't do it and I'm gonna now need to look next door but look there's nothing next door either so now I need to ask the hundreds column to look next door into my tenths column now luckily there is something to borrow so I'm going to borrow this tenth take that down to a zero move the whole tenth across here now I'm going to start again and say right look in my smallest value my thousandths column and my question still says zero subtract two which I can't do but now this time when I look next door I can see there's now a ten because remember this is now a ten in the hundreds column put it down to a nine and borrow that whole 10 across wow look how complicated this little area here looks looks pretty gross doesn't it so we've got to be really careful now not to make any mistakes so in my thousands column now I have a 10 so I now have 10 subtract 2 which is 8 in my hundredth column I have a 9 let's see it there it is 9 subtract 1 which is 8 and in my tenths column, I now have a zero. Zero subtract zero is of course zero. Put back my decimal. Make sure it's in the right line. It is, very good. Now I have nine subtract five, which is four. Two subtract two, which is zero. And nine subtract nothing, which is nine. Wow, what a difficult question. So my answer to 929.10, subtract 25.012, is 904.088. And we avoided making mistakes because we put these column titles on top. So we knew exactly where to lay our numbers. We also avoided mistakes by filling these gaps with the appropriate placeholder, zero. But then the most important part was being really careful when we were borrowing because things got really messy in this little corner so it's really hard to sometimes see what we need to do. Whoa, press pause on the video for a second. Are you a subscriber? If not, what are you thinking? There's loads of maths learning to be done on this channel. Press that subscribe button. Help yourself out. Okay, let's get back to the learning. Okay, so let's have a look at what to remember. Always use our column titles. I can't emphasize enough how important column titles are for avoiding making mistakes. Use placeholders to fill the gaps. If you have gaps in your question, fill them with placeholders. Again, just helps you avoid any small mistakes in addition, but is really important for subtraction. And we start with the smallest value, which in this case could be anything. Could be tenths, hundreds, or thousands. So your turn. Have a go at answering these two questions here. Press pause in the video now, write the questions down, and put your answers in the comment section. I'm going to mark them all. Press pause, good luck. And there you have it, guys. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it was, head on over to themathshelter.com to find loads more lessons like this appropriate to your age groups. But for now, guys, I'm going to see you in another video. Thank you very much for watching. Peace out.